All right, guys, uh, welcome to chapter six, basic rigging. Okay, upon completion of this module, you will be able to identify and describe the use of slings and common rigging hardware. Describe uh, basic inspection techniques and rejection criteria used for slings and hardware. Describe basic hitch configuration and their proper connections. Describe basic load handling safety practices and demonstrate proper use of American National Standard Institute hand signals. Performance tasks, select and inspect appropriate slings for lifting. Given various loads, determine the proper hitch to be used. Select and inspect appropriate hardware and or lifting equipment. Demonstrate and or uh, simulate the proper techniques for connecting hitches. Demonstrate the proper use of hand signals according to ANSI B30.2 and B30.5. Describe or demonstrate pre-lift safety checklist. Describe or simulate how to lift um, the load level. And describe and or demonstrate safety precautions for attaching and disconnecting a load. Okay, here's a few pictures for the next few slides of different types of cranes. This is an overhead crane that would uh, generally be in a shop building. Here we have a track crane on the left. Uh, these cranes usually are moved in in pieces. And then we have a truck crane on the right. Can be driven to the site. The lift can be performed and it can be driven back to, to uh, the storage area. Okay, the maximum load weight that a sling is designed to carry is the rated capacity. It'll be listed on this identification tag. Okay, um, you're looking at this sling. Uh, we notice we have these red uh, warning yarns. What those are for is when the sling begins to be damaged, um, you'll be able to see these yarns uh, fraying from a cut, and that's to tell you that the sling's damaged and unsafe to use. There's a couple of different configurations of slings. Okay, a couple different configurations of how the loops are configured on the slings. Um, here's a synthetic sling uh, with a, a hardware or with end fittings, so metal ends. Okay, <clears throat> here's a sling that has been overloaded and uh, you can see the load bearing yarn and the warning yarn inside. Okay, twin path sling. Okay, when a tattletail has been pulled into the jacket of the sling, it has been overloaded. So the tattletails there, you can see those two small strings, and if that sling's overloaded, those actually won't be there. They'll pulled inside the inside the covering, which means that that sling is actually unsafe to use. Okay. Okay, here's some rejection criteria for, sl for slings. Um, got a damage to the jacket there in A. Um, abrasions in B also. Severe abrasions in C. Minor abrasion in D. Outer jacket cut in E. Inner and outer cuts in F. Uh, just a cut in G. And then in C there, there's a cut with warning threads showing. Okay, some other rejections. I've got a puncture in I. Broken uh, splice or stitching, um, snags showing red uh, red threads, uh, L tensile damage, M tensile break, uh, N uh, overload damage, uh, tattletails are pulled in, uh, O you have a friction burn uh, from abrasion or and heat damage, and then P is severe damage. Hey, okay. most alloy steel chains can be used in temperatures up to 500 degrees Fahrenheit. The markings there on the chain show the grade. Okay, chain slings. Okay, got a single basket on the left, that's a double basket on the right. A three-legged chain bridle. So this has one master connection point and then three hooks can be attached to something to be lifted. Okay, eye and sorting hooks. Okay, so just a few different types of hooks here. Okay, here's some damage to chains. 
which you may see. Okay, wire rope slings must be inspected before each use. Okay, here's a uh, breakaway of the components of wire rope. We have a core. The core is surrounded by uh, smaller pieces of wire rope that are twisted. They're basically a center wire with twists, uh, smaller twisted wires around them, and then they're twisted around the core to form the wire rope. Okay, wire rope supporting cores. There's fiber core, uh, independent wire, or stranded steel core. Those are the different cores that are available for wire rope. Okay, a wire rope sling appears to be damaged. The decision to keep it in service can only be made by a qualified person. There's that uh, qualified person again. Remember when we were in the safety chapter, I. Uh, I mentioned that um, OSHA uses that term quite a bit. Qualified persons, kind of their go-to for things. Okay, one lay, one rope lay. Okay. A bridle hitch consists of two or more slings attached to the same hook, as you can see there in the uh, in the uh, the picture. Okay, there's a multi-leg bridle hitch three slings attached to one ring. Okay, choker hitch. Okay, so if you look at that, the correct way to, to sling that is to have the, the rounded end of that clevis with the end of the sling going through it. That, um, that ensures that you won't pinch that sling, cause a problem. The other things that ensures is as the cable, or as the wire rope moves through the clevis, um, if it's done incorrectly as, as it's done on the left. The movement of the wire rope could actually uh, unscrew the pin in the clevis and cause it to come loose. Okay, um, here's a, uh, another supplement about how to use, the, use a choker hitch appropriately. Um, it needs to be done with the clevis around the, around the cable. Don't use a hook. Clevises are nice and round and smooth. They allow the cable to flow freely through there so that it can, uh, it will tighten as it lifts the load. Okay, here's a double choker hitch. Uh, and these are used mainly on longer pieces of material. Okay, a double wrap choker hitch is ideal for lifting bundles of items such as pipe. Okay, two double wrap choker hitches are recommended when lifting a load longer than 12 feet. Okay, a basket hitch. We just have a sling with two loops that are just looped through a an opening on the on the item to be lifted and then attached to the hook. All right, because of its toughness, shackles for the most for most overhead lifting are made from forged steel. Uh, in general industry, the most widely uh, used type of shackle is the screw pin design. Okay, those are the three along the top. Here's a supplemental art of a wide body shackle and a synthetic web shackle. Notice instead of being really rounded, it's got a straight bar where the web would go through. Okay, uh, these are uh, eye bolts, which is uh, you would use to lift. Um, again, a designated person must inspect eye bolts once each year. Okay. And there are differences there, the shouldered, unshouldered, and swivel. Um, as far as the load they can carry and uh, the directions that you can lift. Okay. When you have an unshouldered eye bolt, it's for a vertical pull. If you pull perpendicular, it's going to cause the eye bolt to fail. All right. Your angular pull on shouldered eye bolts. If we look there with the 90s in green, that's the ideal angle to pull at. Um, but we can pull out to 70 to 75% angle there, or uh, about out to a 45 degree angle for 70 to 75% uh, reduction in load, actually. A shouldered eye bolts can be used for angular load applications. The only thing is, as we see here in the, in the illustration, the shoulder must be firmly contacting the material that it's attached to. Okay, these swivel eye bolts, um, now you can pull it multiple, you know, at a different angle and uh, safely, um, and uh, you can do it at multiple angles. <clears throat> okay. Rejection criteria for eye bolts. There's a, if they're scraping, bent shank, stress cracks, rust and corrosion, elongation, um, 
damaged threads, deformation, or just wear. Okay, this non-locking clamp, this is used for lifting plate steel many times. And as you lift, it actually tightens the clamp on the steel that's being lifted. Here's some other uh, non-standard types of lifting clamps. Here, rejection criteria for lifting clamps. Again, you know, cracks, uh, lost or damaged parts, um, uh, you know, bent, bent frame, rust and abrasions, uh, corrosion. Okay, grab hooks are designed to be used on alloy steel chains. So the grab hook there is this yellow hook right over here. Okay, rejection criteria for hooks. Pretty similar. Uh, where's your scraping cracks, cuts or gouges, excessive rust or corrosion, uh, increase in throat opening. Uh, twist or even an elongation. Okay, stress example. Okay, so if we look at this 2,000 pound load, each sling is uh, carrying 1,000 pounds when it's straight up and down. Okay, um, as that, as that, uh, as you change the angle, it actually increases the stress. Okay, so what we have here is um, as it went to, as we went to that 60 degrees, it added 115 pounds of stress. So um, each sling has to carry 155 pounds additional additional load now because of the angle. Uh, to calculate the total sling stress applied during a lift, you need to know the total weight of the load <laughs> and the angle at which the slings will be attached. Okay. Notice as we continue to go down now at 45 degrees. Now we're up to 414 pounds of additional stress per sling. And now when we get down to 30 degrees, the sling stress is doubled at a horizontal sling angle, angle of 30 degrees. Okay, the block and tackle hoist system. Okay, so um, actually the use of pulleys actually can uh, decrease the amount of load. So the two pulleys that are one above the other on the right of this of this uh, visual here. Actually, the fact that 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 uh, cable loops through that lower pulley it actually reduces the amount of load needed to lift that thousand pounds. Okay, here's some different chain hoists to lift heavy loads. All chain hoists use a gear system. So as you as you spin the wheel, your your force that you're using to spin the sprocket is actually geared down and slows down the force that's lifting the item. Okay, here we have a come along and a ratcheting um, lever hoist. Okay, here's another um, chain hoist. Uh, this is an electric one. It's also on a trolley, so it's mobile. Okay, um, eye bolt orientation. I wanna make sure that the eye bolts are oriented correctly to minimize the stress on them, uh, as you can see here in the, in the illustration. Okay. Uh, point load capacity restrictions. Um, so if we're loading things um, with a small small point, it's going to increase the load. Um, the hooks are designed to have the load distributed more evenly. Okay. Okay. The only person allowed on the landing zone are tagline tenders. Okay. The landing zone is where. Material is going to be set um, set down once it's lifted, um, and a tagline tender for longer material actually keeps the keeps the load from uh, from turning and twisting. Okay. Hand signals are used to communicate load navigation directions. Okay, when you have equipment running on a construction site, you can't yell, so you have to use hand signals. Okay, a navigational single of one or both arms extended, palms down, and retracted in a rapid motion indicates emergency stop. Okay, here's some overhead crane signals. Rear swing path. All right, thanks guys, review this. Make sure you complete the quiz.